Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. Welcome as we gather together for our continued study of uh, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, chapter four. If you have to say like Thessalonians ten times in a row really fast, I don't know. That would that, that would be kind of be a somewhat of a tongue twister. Yeah. All <laughs> I know is yesterday I said I like when they're short and they pack a punch. Well, today's pretty short too, but it packs a bigger punch, I think. Yeah, there's a lot so, of good. There's yeah. a lot of good stuff in Put here. Put your seatbelts on. <laughs> You're buckling up and getting ready for, for this. And so uh, I think I'm going to read the first part in there. We want to just welcome you again. And and again, if you have prayer requests, uh, anything we can be praying for, for you, uh, it's our privilege to take that before God's throne of grace. And um, also, uh, just uh, just know that uh, throughout all of this. Uh, like we need each other, we need community, we need to have the support and care and concern of, of, of people around us to get through everything that we've gone through um, as a nation and as a world, really. There's a lot of people that are suffering in, in the whole world. So we want to be there for each other and be strong in the Lord so that we can help others. So let's, uh, let's keep that focus. So First Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'll start us off. Finally, brothers... We instruct, instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen, who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for all such sins as we have already told you and, and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other, and in fact you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers, to do so more and more. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Continuing with verse 13, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant, but those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead of, in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. All right. Just a little bit of stuff to cover here. Yeah. Let's let pray. Father, we thank you for this time together, for your presence in our life, for the gift of grace and mercy. We need you, Lord God, and we desperately cry out to you. Um, we pray that your people, who are called by your name, would humble themselves and turn to you, crying out to you on behalf of this nation, on behalf of um, the church, that we would... Uh, really press into knowing you more deeply and fully. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So the Apostle Paul is, is right off the bat, he's talking about um, how we should live our lives to please God. And that's, a, you know, that's an easy thing to say mm -hmm. and a very hard thing to do because maybe more often than not, I'm living my life to please people. Um, that you know, who, who doesn't like to be praised by someone? Sure. Who doesn't like to be get, getting an accolade from someone? 
And there's a danger in that, and in, in that we, you know, we're we're seeking, really, to self-aggrandizement, and instead of seeking to know the Lord and living to please God, which at times, if we're living to please God, uh, the world's not going to like you. Right. They're they're just they're just not going to they're not they're going to call you ter- a terrible person if you're seeking to, to live to please God. So that right off the bat is very difficult, I think. Um, for all of us. And then he talks about, uh, again, that uh, it's God's will, verse 3, that you should be sanctified. That's a kind of a Christianese word uh, to mean growing more and more into the image of Christ, to be made holy. Uh, so we are set apart as Christians to follow not the world, but to follow Christ. So this is particularly talking to Christians not talking to the rest of the, the rest of the world here because of course they're not going to follow the, the Lord so it's in, it shouldn't shock us and surprise us when uh, the world goes chasing after uh, sexual fulfillment in any number of ways uh, that shouldn't that shouldn't shock us or surprise us but what he's calling the church to is to put that aside and to follow the Lord uh, and that Sexual relations are reserved for a married couple, man and a woman, uh, within a marriage relationship. And so anything else is against the will of God. But again, this is, this is he's speaking to the church, right? To, to people who say they're followers of Jesus. So we've got to get our act together uh, before kind of going out and saying, oh, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, of course they're not going to do that. <laughs> they're not they don't know the Lord so they need to know the Lord Jesus and once we know the Lord Jesus we want to seek to follow him and not the passions of the, the world around us and so within that context uh, in verse 9 he says now about brotherly love we do not need to write to you for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other so within that we express our love in a way that is reflective of Christ's love for us and within the bounds of that love. So, uh, <laughs> I'll probably get myself into trouble uh, for saying this. I, I think we're misconstrued, especially if it's a Christian that posts the sign that says, Love is love. Mm. Uh, in one sense, yeah, love is love. But the expression of our love is bound by how we live that out, is bound by. Uh, following Christ and his, his uh, uh, call for our lives. So, obviously, our love is expressed, can be expressed in a different way. Then we would express our love to our children. And so, it's not in a sexual way with our children. It wouldn't be in a sexual way with, I have very dear friends. I have friends from college who I love. I, I, you know, been, we've been friends for years since 1980 right and uh, but we don't we don't express that love in a sexual way so this is he's saying yes have brotherly love mm-hmm. have sisterly love and care for each other it's expressed in an appropriate way I don't know do you have any, any well and there's also this? tough love too yeah. you know sometimes love isn't all nicey nicey you know you have to speak the truth in love yeah so sometimes it can get difficult yeah. You know. Well, believe me, the, my college buddies and I, uh, we don't agree on everything. And so, even even not that's not a marriage relationship, like, we don't agree on everything, right? Mm-hmm. So there's times that there's just things that we have to kind of work out. But amongst my college buddies uh, that I still interact with, there's things that we vehemently disagree on. And you can do that. See, that's a, that's a problem, in, uh, part of a problem in our culture. The lie is that uh, you don't really love me and care for me unless you affirm all my choices in life. No, we can disagree with each other. We can even say, no, what you're doing is, is wrong, but I'm here for you, and I love you, and I care for you. You, can't hold, you can hold both. It's not like, oh, you have to affirm everything that everybody's doing to be their friend. That's, that's not really love mm-hmm. at that point. Right. So... Um, and then he says, uh, really make your ambition, your ambition to lead quiet life, mind your own business, work with your hands. In other words, 
And then there's the, the old saying, right, the uh, idle hands are the devil's workshop. And to, to really, uh, you know, people, it's, it's, sometimes I think there's a desire for us to uh, join in on, on uh, protesting this or protesting that. And I think sometimes it's a little bit tougher to live our lives in such a way in our neighborhood, in our workplace, in our school, in a way that honors God, instead of seeing, like, it's always, I think people want to have a tendency to see the enemy is the, out there, and I have to protest whatever is going on out there, instead of saying, no, I need to take care of what, uh, the people that I directly interact with, mm -hmm. that's where it starts with, if you want to change the world, um, to live the, a quiet life, working with your hands, so that there's no, that, uh, uh, you gain the respect of outsiders. You can start having a conversation with them and discuss things. Uh, so you, you kind of see what I'm saying in there? Yeah, because I feel like, you know, we can't save the world, but we can do our part in our little part of the in world. In our neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So they're very good. And so then there's this whole last section here, kind of exciting. Yeah, um, super exciting. And it's the, the coming of Jesus. And I think this really dispels the idea of, of millennialists that, you know, Jesus is going to return, there's going to be a thousand years of literal reign on the earth, and then he's going to, uh, you know, then you're going to go uh, up to heaven after that. Well, look, look here and read what it says. Uh, verse 15, according to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, when, break it down, step so, by step. All right, so when Jesus comes again, there. so right now, let's say if you die and you're, you have faith in Christ, you're with the Lord. But the scripture also talks about a time of the bodily resurrection. So your spirit is with God. And then there will be a time when, when Christ returns of the bodily resurrection. So this is what he's talking about, the dead in Christ will rise first. So their, their body will rise. It's not going to be the frail body that was placed in the grave, mm -hmm. the decomposed body that's made mm -hmm. in the grave. It's going to be the glorified body that is made for eternity forever. Your spirit is made forever. Now your body will be made, is forever. Uh, it won't decay like it is now. It won't be worn out. Uh, we won't have the knee pain and all kinds mm -hmm. of other things that we have that break, break right. down. That's all gone. And then he says, uh, after that, which I wouldn't look at it as a long period of time. It's just like, boom, this happens. Mm -hmm. Boom, this happens. Mm -hmm. If we're still alive, then we're caught up to be with Christ. We don't be put in the grave. Our bodies aren't put in the grave. We're immediately... Uh, spirit and body mm -hmm. with the Lord. Uh, so this is all happens when Jesus returns. It's the end. That's it. You know, Jesus comes back. It's the end, and nobody knows the day or the hour. But all of us should be prepared as if this is the day uh, that we could be, because we don't know. We don't know when our last day is. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we we assume when we wake up in the morning. Oh, I have another day. Mm -hmm. Very well, could have mm -hmm. another day, but you might not have another day. Yeah. This is just, to me, just so bullet. Boom, 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 you know? It's clear. It's, yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. And it's something, like, I've read this. I have a lot underlined in this book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I realize that sometimes you can't underline everything, <laughs> but it's close. Well, anyway, I, I didn't have that underlined. Mm. I do now. Now you, now you do. <laughs> but it's like, you know how you read something several times, and then something just pops? It, well, it popped. It clicked for you. It clicked. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great in there. So uh, be prepared always. Uh, and he says, verse 18, I like that. He mm -hmm. says, therefore, encourage each other with these words. Yeah. Look, we're in the Lord. So we can live each day. Each day should be lived as a gift from God. And to his glory, to his honor, and to love of our neighbor. He encourages brotherly love, right? All this stuff is to occur. Uh, and when the Lord returns, the Lord's going to return. I don't have to obsess over that. I don't have to make right. a book over that. Uh, when When is Jesus going to return? What's the world events that are going to happen? We should be aware of, the, of those things, but 
I don't know when my last day is. You don't know when your last day is. So live each day as if the Lord will return. But we also live each day with confidence because it says in Jesus we can live uh, to the fullness of life. In him uh, is life. Mm -hmm. And that life was the light of men. So we can live in the fullness of life today knowing we're in Jesus' arms. And when he returns, he returns. Mm -hmm. You know, praise the Lord. Yes. In there. So let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you so much for this day you have blessed us with. Thank you for your provision for us, that your mercies are truly new every morning. Help us to live this day knowing we're held in the everlasting and loving arms of Jesus. And that that frees us to fully live, to love our neighbor well, to care for the people you placed in our lives, to live as a reflection of your grace and your mercy and peace in our life. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day, everybody.